for that, the most important data is not what you read and who you meet and what you buy, it's what's happening inside your body. So we had these two big revolutions, the computer science revolution, or the infotech revolution, and the revolution in the biological sciences. And they are still separate, but they are about to merge. What happens when humans start blending biology with AI? We gain the power to rewrite life itself. Imagine seeing organ farms, governments using artificial wombs to boost populations, and robots with biological parts. Even genetically modified humans who can heal others with just a touch. This is the world of biotechnology. But what impact will this have on the future of humanity? Could humans become an invasive species by engineering life? And if we bioengineer human bodies, could we evolve into a new species, becoming less human and more alien? AI is actually designed to make life easier, but it also raises a lot of concerns about its impact on humanity. While many tech companies praise the benefits of AI, there are many people who warn about its dangers. The one famous voice out of many is Yuval Noah Harari. And the third, and maybe most complicated, is technological disruption. It's the rise of artificial intelligence and biotechnology, which will completely change the economy, the political system, our lives over the next two, three, four decades. Yuval Noah Harari is a historian, philosopher, and author of bestsellers like Sapiens, Homo Deus, and 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. Harari believes that humans are hackable now, and they will eventually be denied free will. We humans should get used to the idea that we are no longer mysterious souls. We are now hackable animals. Data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. In the past, many tyrants and governments wanted to control people completely, but they couldn't because they didn't understand biology well enough and didn't have the computing power to handle so much data. However, with the merging of AI and biotechnology, some corporations and governments will be able to hack everyone systematically. Now you might be wondering, how is it even possible to hack a human being? It might sound like science fiction to you, but with the advancements in AI, this is no longer a far-fetched idea. Take biometric sensors, for example. These devices can measure everything from your heartbeat to your stress levels, and when combined with facial and voice recognition technologies, they enable systems to constantly monitor and identify individuals. Think about how a dictatorial government could use these tools. They could keep tabs on every citizen, every minute of the day, knowing exactly where you are and what you're doing. Creepy, right? Now, let's take it a step further with an advanced example of Elon Musk's Neuralink. This company is working on brain chip implants that can interface directly with your brain, potentially allowing you to control devices with your thoughts. While Neuralink promises incredible benefits, like helping those with paralysis regain control of their limbs, it also raises concerns about privacy and control. Imagine if such a device were hacked or misused. The implications are staggering, giving a whole new meaning to the idea of mind control. Apart from hacking brain chip implants, another deadly way to hack a human system is by hacking its genetic code or by creating a bioengineered virus. By manipulating the genetic code of viruses, scientists can create modified strains that can target specific diseases. However, the integration of AI into this field takes it to another level, amplifying the potential risks. Artificial intelligence can accelerate the design and testing of bioengineered viruses, making it possible to design viruses with enhanced transmissibility or virulence, posing a significant biosecurity risk. But is the merging of AI and bioengineering as deadly as it sounds? The shortest possible answer is yes. It can actually become a weapon to control humanity. As you may know, diseases are incredibly dangerous and have killed more humans than any other natural disaster or war. They often emerge from nature, jumping from animals to humans. However, naturally occurring diseases have a built-in limit due to evolution. They can only become so virulent or contagious. But bioengineered viruses, on the other hand, might not have these natural limits. For example, in the book End Times by a New York-based journalist, Brian Walsh, there's a scenario where bioterrorists engineer a virus by combining the common cold with the deadly Nipah virus. Nipah is extremely lethal, but not very contagious. If such a virus were created, it could become a super virus, 
which is plausible given advances in synthetic biology, CRISPR, and gene editing. These advancements make it easier to manipulate viruses in potentially dangerous ways. Despite these risks, there's no such option as to stop advancing in the fields of biotech and AI. Big techs like NVIDIA, Google, and Microsoft are spending millions on the future of biotech AI. If you want to watch the complete video about why they betting billions on biotech AI, click on the I button. Well, all of this brings us to the Collingridge Dilemma, which is named after British academic David Collingridge. It says we have the most control over a new technology in its early stages, but that's also when we know the least about its potential impacts. Once a technology is widely used and its effects are clear, it becomes much harder to control. Think about social media. It would have been easy to regulate early on, but now, as we see its deep impact on society, regulating it is very difficult. With biotech and AI, we are at a critical point where they are not yet fully embedded, meaning we can still control them. However, we don't know the best way to do this yet, but when it comes to the future of humanity, we can't simply afford to wait and see what happens because the stakes are too high. We need to move forward with awareness and responsibility, especially those working in these fields. Well, what do you think? Share your thoughts and check out these videos on your screen for more interesting AI-related content.